Good evening, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us tonight. My name is Drew Dameron, and I'm the library manager here at the Tokyo American Club. Tonight, we're delighted to be hosting professional conservator of Buddhist artifacts, Akiko Kubo. Akiko Kubo is also friends with tech member and close friend Reiko Saito, who will serve as Kubo-san's interpreter. We'll begin tonight's program with a presentation from Kubo-san, followed by an open Q&A session using the questions submitted by everyone joining us virtually tonight. Please use the Q&A button on your screen to submit your questions at any time, and I'll ask them on your behalf. Thank you very much. The music industry isn't the usual route for relic restoration, but a music label project proved serendipitous for Akiko Kubo. After failing to find a satisfactory mannequin for a prop, she decided to carve her own. After completing that project, she continued to study and encountered the world of Buddhist statues via a book by sculptor and restorer Kocho Nishimura. Since becoming a professional conservator in the year 2000, Kubo has restored and repaired over 100 carvings, and she joins us here tonight to introduce the history and techniques of this important cultural work. Thank you, and please enjoy the events. Hi, I'm Reiko. Uh, we have been friends for over 30 years. We are happy to be here. She will be presenting, and I will be translating and casually asking some questions. The presentation will be just like you are going to be in our living room. So I hope you enjoy. OK. OK. Hi. Thank Let's you, enjoy. Aiko. Hello, my name is Akiko Kubo. I am a restorer. I mainly repair and restore Buddhist statues. Today, I would like to introduce my work, which is preserving Japanese culture. I usually present in Japanese, but today I will try in English. I hope you enjoy. First, I would like to talk about my long journey to preserve cultural property. When I was in the elementary school, an Asian copper bell, which was over 2000 years old, was found in my school. Because of this, we had to go to the labor school for a year. Around the same time, our teacher told me that the temple on the 10 yen coin was made 1000 years ago. And we can visit this temple easily even now. This was the beginning of my long journey to preserve cultural property. <laughs> That's summer vacation. I decided to visit the Ten Yen Temple. I found a very beautiful garden and a big sleepy looking Buddhist statue in this temple. That statue was funny looking to me, but I was impressed that the temple was kept for 1,000 years. Since then, I became more and more interested in history and visited many historical places and read many history books. I and when I was 20, I enjoy visiting Asian countries. After university, I worked in a music label company, Sony Music Entertainment. I was on the production team and was asked to look for a mannequin for a prop. I went through catalogs, and, but I could not find a piece that I like. So I decided to make my own. As you can imagine, it was not easy. I studied about carving and I come across Japanese Buddhist statue again. This is a book that changed my career. It is a book written by Kocho Nishimura, 
she was a Buddhist statue restorer. I learned from his book that there are many ways to preserve culture. At that time, I lived in a historical area in Tokyo, which was losing many old cultures by the urban development. Old buildings were turned down for new buildings. So I simply wanted to preserve our city as it was. So I tried to find a restorer and met him. That is how I started my career as a restorer. Mm. 20 years have passed since then. I have preserved many Buddhist statues. I enjoyed it very much. And now I have two more roles. Restorer, a restorer, a speaker, and an advisor. I repair and preserve cultural properties and I deliver the stories about the value of these cultural properties. And I advise how to preserve cultural properties. Okay, so hmm. as a woman restorer, uh, was there any difficulty in your work? I know, Jose to stay. Jose to stay. Thank you. Jose to stay, Muzukashi Kotova. So, ne, I know, ma, Hokano Shokugoto, Mataku Onajiona, challenge, Mita and Monoa, Adimas name. So the, the challenges are pretty close to any work that we can, yeah. Tada. え、体が小さい。男性に比べて体が小さいので、あ、力が弱い。他の女性に比べるとだいぶ力強いですけど。Since <笑> women are smaller uh, than men, it's well you are you are stronger than you think. でも小さか、小さいかったり軽かったりすることがいいこともすごくあって あ、まあ、リサーチ、この後話しますけど、リサーチに行った時に、まあ、お寺の不安定な床でも私が乗っても大丈夫だったり。So mm. being like there is a benefit of being small or lighter even during the research. Uh when you go to an unstable floor on the old temple, it's okay for you to stand, right? Mm. Oh, how about the story about the <laughs> あ、リサーチに行った時に、あ、仏像をこう動かした時に音がしたんですね。で、仏像の中が空洞で、ま、何か入っているというので、頭をこう溶かして、え、首の穴が開いてるんですけど、そこからこう手を入れて中のものを取
but you think you thought this was uh, just a research and not restoring, so it's okay to wear anything. And she also thought that it would be nice to wear nicer clothes because it's a museum. Right? Okay. <laughs> In the research, we take many pictures. Any clothes with colors and can be in a way pink is not a good color. <laughs> Even the smell, smell of the statues are very important. It helps finding the material or the kind of wood they used. So no perfume, <laughs> of course. He's uh, not good either. We go for a long walk when we research. So, oh, okay. So, you can tell how angry my master was. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what other things that you cannot wear during the street? Uh, eh to, watch, watch, yes. Uh, belt. Belts. Mm, Clothing with buttons. And rings. Hand cream. Even marriage rings. And mm. hand cream. No hand creams. Mm. Okay. So you wear that. You want to show your clothes? Ah, yeah. This is what she wears for, for when she goes for, for the research. <laughs> it's called Samoe. Somewhere. Somewhere. So you. There's no button. And the, the important part is that the, it it's uh it's closed at the bottom. Yes. Why is nande? Oh, because if the the edge of the 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 pants uh touches other stuff, it's kind of dangerous. You trip over or something like that. So it's it's good that it's all closed. あの、カルチャルプロパティ、文化財はすごく繊細なので、少しでも当たると、例えば表面のカラーだとか漆が少しでも取れてしまうのは、絶対NGなので。So mm. mm. all the cultural properties are very sensitive and even the surface of those cultural properties can uh, break off or uh, just uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it would come off. Mm -hmm. So it is important that no clothing is going to attack any of the surface. It's very sensitive. So that's why it has to be stuck on your uh, body, just like that. Yes. Mm. Okay. okay. Please go ahead. Okay. Since then, I have run a lot. This is my work now. I repair cultural properties. Japanese restorers respect the history of the cultural property. For example, the statue on the left has a vertical crack on its face and a bandage that wraps around its body. This is the statue before repairing. The picture on the right is after repairing. You can see that its face and its uh, arm are fixed. But you can see that we did not change anything else. Mm -hmm. We only fixed the crack and its arm. We respect the long history of the statue and pass it on to the next generation. So, you can see that it still looks old after we repair the statue. Mm. It's not brand new. Mm. Mm. The hard part is the new part I made. I specialize in preserving Buddhist statues. Buddhist statues are very unique. It is a cultural property as well as a symbol of belief. Statue with broken faces or body parts do not tape their role as a Buddhist statues. I listen to the client, uh, 
local people and art scholar, art scholars art scholar. mm. to make the right decision. Mm. Mm. That is why researching is important. These are the pictures when we research. We research many things. We research the name, similar example, regional belief, material, site, how it, uh, how it is made, record of its repairing, how it's being kept and preserved, and so on. So when, even though the owner doesn't, may not know the name of the statue, like the owner, the owner, the there are many cases that even the owner doesn't know any of these information, mm. but they need to be preserved, so you go and research. Mm. Mm. Okay. We also research the history and the culture behind. あ、元々の名前ではなくて、その地域の人の願いで仏像の名前が変わる、変わっているということもあるんですね。So, uh, mm. for example, Den Shakanyorai is uh used to be called something else, but with the, all the local people's wishes, the name changed. So she goes and and research that mm, mm, mm. that that too. Mm. Japanese culture have diverse beliefs, and that is one of the reasons research is important. It is a key to restore Japanese cultural properties. Now you can see, to make the right decision, research is very important. I mentioned the diversity of our beliefs. Let me explain some of the history in our beliefs. As you know, there are two major religions in Japan, Buddhism and Shintoism. However, these two belief believers were separated only 140 years ago. This is a chart of the Japanese religion from the ancient times uh, till now. First, there was a primitive religion in Japan. After that, Buddhism came and influenced our primitive religion. Our primitive religion changed into Shintoism and folk religion. This was the middle of the 6th century. After this, more religion came in, such as Confucianism, Taoism, Christianity, and so on. But Japan did not reject any of the concept. We localized the belief into our own convenient way and developed them into our new culture. Yes, just like Halloween, Christmas, you can see all these foreign cultures and religion and events that we do. Mm. We're very good at absorbing culture <laughs> and religious events. Uh, tea ceremony. Oh, even the tea ceremony mm. and Zen, Zen is mm. from China. China. Yeah, so yeah. we thought that was all Japanese. Mm. Not originally. <laughs> it's it's a combination of other uh, culture. Mm. Japanese people are very good at absorbing other culture into our lifestyle. We make it our original. Because of that, Japan has complicated beliefs and mm -hmm. culture. In addition, Japan has different climate, different nature in each area of the country. These elements create each lifestyle which connected connect to local culture even the materials mm. change 
、かその天候とかで材料も変わるでしょう、うんうん、例えば、えー、仏像なんかだと木で作ってるんだけど、うんうん、そこに生えてる木って違うから。うんうん、so, even for example, because the season and the temperature and the climate changes, the material of those statues are different, made of different trees、うん、that are planted or、うん、ha,、uh, in the In those areas. あんまり知られてないかもしれないけど、うん、水が京都と関西と、うん、あの関東だと何度が違うから、うん、東京は硬いし、うん、京都とか関西は柔らかいから、うん uh, so the, so the From the west side of Japan and even Kanto area is very different, as for some of you might know. So, using those water is a different element, different. Even the impression of the, the Asian pictures differ because they use different types of water.、Mm. Okay. Decision making is another important responsibility we have as a restorer. Especially with the beauty statues, it is important to define what is the best for the statue and how much we decide, decide to repair. We need to think about the value of the belief. For example, This is a statue we repaired. It had been repaired before, but its Lahotsu was repaired very roughly. Lahotsu is the hairstyle of Buddha when he attained enlightenment.、Mm. We did a deep research on religion value. We decided. To restore only the Lahotsu. Some art restorers may, may not restore them, but as a Buddhist statue restorer, we need to keep the statue's value as a symbol of belief. You can see that decision making is a very important process. So, Lahotsu is each. Each hair, that, that little bump, Iko Iko ga Lahotsu, Lahotsu, Lahotsu. Lahotsu, Lahotsu. And okay, so how many Lahotsu did you carve <laughs> in total <laughs> for this statue? Kore de nanko gurai hotsu? 140, about 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 140. 
プッダはこうトランスレートトランスフォームトランスフォーム、うん、あのトランスフォームするっていうふうに、ん、お経に書いてある、うんうん、so, uh, so it's, it's said that the that Buddha when he attained enlightenment he transformed from human to Buddha、mm -hmm. and there are several differences between the, the previous、uh, figure and、ね、Buddha、mm -hmm. after he、mm -hmm. attained enlightenment and this is one of it and the Hotsu too okay、mm -hmm. ね、so that's why to understand the, the transformative,、uh, transformed places, because those are very important for Buddha,、mm. because that, that's how he transformed and that's the symbol of、mm. who he is. So he, they,、uh, Akiko,、uh, tried to put that,、mm. repair that part.、Mm. Mm. Okay? Yes. By the way, do you know how many temples there are in Japan? <laughs> temples. Okay. Temples and shrines. Temples and shrines? Only temples? Oh, only temples. Only, only, only temples. temples. Okay. No. There are almost 76,000. This is more than the convenience stores we have in Japan. As of 2020, there are almost 56,000 convenience、mm -hmm. stores in Japan. Now, you can imagine how much temple do we have to preserve? For example, this is a picture of the main hall of Hokongoji Temple in Sakura, Chiba Prefecture. How many statues can you see in this picture? One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is 70. <laughs> in general, there are two, 20 to 30 Buddhist statues in each temple. We found other cultural properties in this temple. There are over 70 different kinds of cultural properties. There are 50 Asian documents, six pagodas, Buddhist, Buddhist tablets,、mm -hmm. crowns,、uh, printing blocks, and memorial tablets. Some of these are repaired already, but most of them are waiting for its. Restoration. One of the treasures from this temple, which was repaired, is the Buddhist surplus called Shichijo Gesa. This is called Kesa, and it is a gown which the monks wear. These surplus were from 424 years ago. It was damaged badly and needed、uh, repair. So, the picture on the right is the actual kesa,、mm -hmm. uh, which you found. This is a jitsubutsu. This is from 400 years ago. Yeah. One of the treasures,、ah, from the financial reason, Uh, it was difficult for the owner could not to ask for a repairment for this kesa.、Mm. So、um, they applied for the subsidy of Sakura City, but they could not get it easily,、mm. including three years of research and preparation. They spent almost 10 years to repair. As I have mentioned before, there are many cultural properties which are waiting for their turn to be repaired. Even if any temple had great cultural properties, it is difficult to get people's attention. So, 
it is not easy to find financial support for these requirements. I had a strong feeling toward preserving culture to pass it on to the on to our next generation. But the reality is that there are very few properties we can pre preserve. Preserving cultural properties is uh, deeply connected to our lifestyle. I want to show you that temples and shrine are storyteller of its local culture. Let me share my experiences with you. This is a statue in a temple called Hosenji. Uh, in Chiba Prefecture. It is called Kishibojin, um, but local people called it Koyasu-sama, which represents as a god for raising kids, and it is a local belief. This belief is popular among the women uh, all over the country since 400 years ago. But, only few of them remain in the country. And when there are no TV, internet, a hospital, or medicine, uh, many mental or physical concerns were solved by speaking with others. Mm -hmm. So people uh, came to this temple to see this statue and uh, to talk to each other to talk about the problems and solving. Mm. <laughs> Even now, in this area, women visited this temple to pray and gather in a local restaurant to chat. <laughs> this temple need this statue to keep this local belief. If we cannot preserve this statue, this community will lose this custom. There will not be a reason for the people to visit the temple or even to chat after. As you can see, this local culture will be difficult to continue without this statue's existence. Mm. Here is another example. I found when I repaired this statue, it was damaged badly. This statue is called Kaiun Dai Kokten. Kaiun means opening your own luck. Dai Kokten is one of the seven lucky gods. Anyway, in this Dai Kokten festival, people come to get a mallet and a willow which are special lucky charm from this temple. Willows bend, but it uh, does not break. So there is a message in this charm to be strong and flexible. People buy this every year. It is a rare to have willow as a charm. That's a very rare charm. A rare charm. Mm. Mm, rare charm. Mm. And this culture will not continue without uh, this temple or the statue I repaired. There are small culture and customs we can preserve in Japan. Mm -hmm. I have never seen a willow charm. It, mm. Mm, it's so rare. Yeah. <laughs> Mm, ah, the ah. rice ear. <laughs> we, we see that, but not the willow. It's very, it looks similar, but mm. not, not quite the same. Okay. Mm. By the way, this Daikokuten festival starts from midnight. And many people come to celebrate from distance areas. One elder said that, this festival used to be a dating spot. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> it was called the festival in dark and it was a very special night for young women and men to meet. Many men and women became couples from this festival. So do they still have it? Mother yatte. Ima mo yatte ru kedo ima wa dating spot They still do this festival but it's no more a dating spot. Kono hito ga ippai iru shashin wa ima no shashin. So this picture on the right is the the recent picture. Mochiron korona da kara ima chotto maybe because of corona it's not it's not being held now but it's a recent picture. Uh, so Young people were always looking forward to the event. This is not a custom anymore in this area, but it is nice to hear about the local history. And only few people know about this history. In this temple, there is another story. This statue is called Senju Kannon. It means statue with thousand mm. hands. It also has a mask on. It is said that this statue has too much power that normal people would lose their eyes when they see its face. The, its real face? Yes. yes without yes. the mask? Yeah. Oh, no. So this is a picture with the mask because yes. we we can't see the real face mm, because so. we will lose our これ, eyes. This is from the catalog from a few years ago at the exhibition. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. yes, yes. Mask Even in the catalog, they don't want to take the mask on, off. <laughs> Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, that is why we are not supposed to see these statues mm -hmm. without this mask. The body of this statue was made over 1000 years ago, but the mask was made about 600 years ago. So it is interesting to know what has happened in that 400 mm -hmm. years. These are more messages. Here is an example. This is Buddhist statue has a bronze plate with a record of the local disaster mm -hmm. inside. This area has a disaster of heavy rain and wind. Even two years ago, there was a big disaster caused by a typhoon. Recently, the government or universities are paying attention to these records, which was found in these cultural properties and Asian document. That big earthquake in northern area of Japan on 11 March 2009 was unexpected. 2011. Was an expected disaster and had more damage than the researchers had expected. But this was mentioned in the Asian document mm -hmm. too. There are times I find people's wishes from the statue. When I repaired these statues, we found 7,000 papers inside. They are from 150 to 200 years ago. Maybe these papers were put in when it was repaired before. On those papers, there were wishes. The most popular wishes among all paper were about the eye disease. Please look at the paper on the right. This is one of the paper we found from the statue. In this picture, we can read me, 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 mm. which means I in Japanese. 
We can understand from the Asian writing that a wife of a person called Se Mitsugoro Sekiguchi wants to cure her eye disease and stomachache. Those days, there are no eye doctor or glasses when they got eye disease or myopia. They try to get an mm. ancestor or depend on folk remedies. That you bring various messages to us. Now, I am in the new phase of my career. I feel the importance of connecting people who are interested in preserving Japanese culture. Over these past 20 years, I studied as a restorer and researcher, and now I speak about the story of each discovery for people to know about the importance of preserving cultural property. However, I also found that this is not enough. I am now building a platform to connect, it, connect the people who are interested in preserve culture. This platform is to connect the people who are interested in local history and culture or too much tempered with uh, Asian document with the people who can analyze it. Connecting restorers to temple and shrine which need their help. Finding sponsor for the one in need. There are many opportunities to connect people to preserve local culture. Now, you can see that temple bring messages from a lot of eras. These messages come from people from the history who respected the local beliefs or who made various wishes to the statues, which tell us many stories behind. We receive messages sent from the long history. You say you speak with the people from the histories <laughs> when you research. Japan is made of diverse local culture. Cultural properties exist not only in Kyoto or Nara, but in small local towns or temples in your area. You can find various interesting history from all over the country. You can always preserve culture in some way. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I always enjoy. It's mm. kiderkedo. I always enjoy your stories. <laughs> so I've got some questions. And if anyone has questions online, Hmm. Um, that will be great. So we have several of them here. So ne, choto tsumon ga aru no de. Hi. Eh, mazu. Eh, is it okay for me to ring a temple bell if I am not Buddhist? You are Buddhist, or not? No, ni. This temple bell, ti yu no wa, tabun gong ti da to mon da ke do. Aro tatai ti no, ano narashi ti no ka. Etto Buddhist. じゃないと鳴らしてはいけないということはないんですけど、まあ、無闇に鳴らしてはいけない。So <laughs> the, the big bell, you, 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 can, you can ring it uh, at a certain time, you, even if you're not Buddhist, but you, you cannot do, you cannot ring whenever you want to. There's a certain time you can. Mm. And maybe some people might say, uh, think that temple bell is Shrine bells, like ね、だと思ってる人もいるかもしれない。神社のシュラインベルはあの最先の
So there are different uh, meanings in ringing the mm. shrine bell because when you ring that bell, it cleanses off your body before praying, and it also reduces demon. Mm. Mm. Even with what uh, cleansing, what I know, hands, とかもそうだね。うん。あの、it's a, it's なんだっけ、汚れ。汚れ。うん。これが英語で言うとなかなかないんだけど、あ、汚れっていうのは汚れもあるし、うん、その煩悩っていうか、うんうんうん、その欲みたいなものもあるし。うんうんうんうん There's a lot of meaning in kegare. It it means dirt and dirty, but also it it uh, speaks about the desire mm, mm. and uh, the greenness. Mm. So it's a lot of so you you have to have you have to cleanse all of that off from the body. Like, so, no, naras koto de i ningen ni naru tte no ga na i ningen toshite kami sama ni au. っていうのがあるし、うん、だからあの鈴をお賽銭で鳴らすこともあれば、うんえっと、お祓いをしたことがあれば、うん、巫女さんがこう鈴でこう全部払ってくれるのも見たことあると思うんですけど。そう、in Shintoism, in Shintoism, by ringing those bells, you cleanse yourself to be a better person or a clean person to face God, and also you might have been to a、uh, Oharai,、uh, which is、uh, the woman priest <laughs> in, from Shintoism,、uh, rings the bells、uh, before praying so that you, you're cleansed off as well. So the big temple bell, boom, that is also、uh, telling the time. So you don't want to. Be mess, messing the time by just ringing whenever. あのお坊さんがあの毎日鳴らさなきゃいけないから、すごく大変で、だって旅行にも行けないでしょ。なるほど。So monks that you know cannot even go traveling because they have to ring that bell every day. 自動で鳴らすやつもある。Oh, there are automatic bells these days. So that's interesting. Okay. So there's another、uh, question.、Yes. When, when hiking in the mountains, I am surprised to see so many temples in remote places. How do these temples survive so far away? Are they actually busy and well supported? テンポお寺さんとかはどうやって生き残っているのか、うん、あの人が来るのかそれでサポートちゃんと支えられて支援されているのかって、うんうんうん、まず、えー、と支援されているというかその山自体が信仰の対象というふうになっているっていうのもあるし、うんうん、あなんていうのかな。So the mountain itself is... Is a representative of God、うん、sometimes. So, it's a folk The folk religion. Yeah, yeah, folk yeah. religion.、うん、だから信者がいるし、うん、えー、お寺に限って言うんだったら、うん、お寺って三号って山にあるあの仏教の中でえっ、ー、と難しいけどそのブッダがいるところは山だっていうふうになってるので。うんすべてのお寺に三号ってなんとかさんなんとかなんとかっていう名前がついてますね。だから山の中にある方が、so, うんとなんていうのかな正しいというか。うん。So for one reason,、uh, mountains are are, are representative of God, and folk there are folk religions. So those people who are the believers of those are still still Uh, supporting the temples,、mm. and also、uh, they do actually go to visit. And also, there's another Buddhism reason Buddhism、uh, temples always have a name under mountain,、mm. something, something, san. So that's that san is a mountain.、Mm -hmm. And、uh, so it's, a, it's pretty proper、mm. to have temples in the mountains.、Mm. うん
富士山なんかは山の上に神社があるんだけど、うん、富士山は目が女の神様だって言われたりしてるあの富士山自体が神様だっていう、うん、そういうその、うん、神道もあればフォークレディジョンっていうのもあるし、うん、even like、uh, Mount Fuji there is a temple、uh, there is a shrine up there temple あ<笑>下がテンプルで上が神社。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。神仏集合だから。Okay, one more.、Mm. Yeah, what does the Jizo statue mean?、Mm. I see them in many temples, Ojizo san,、mm. many temples, and sometimes they are very cute,、mm. but I don't know their meaning.、Mm. And so, Jizo san wa te, Otera ni taksa iru ke do, it's good kawa in da ke do, don't na imi ga aru. Jizo bosats wa, eh, to, mazu, そのお坊さんと同じような格好をしているっていうのは、えっと、そのなんていうのかな親近感をか、うん、親近感を持ってもらうために、うん、より身近な仏であるということを表すために、うん、お坊さんの格好をしているっていうふうに言われるのね。So first of all, 地蔵部、地蔵菩薩、うん、it's called 地蔵菩薩、うん。お地蔵様 has、uh, have、uh... Faces looking similar to monks.、うん、and also, what they're wearing are the kesa that we、うん、just saw.、うん、and also, it's like that so that people will feel close to, to Jizo.、うんうん、Because, the one who is in the world, 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 the one who is in the world. The end of enlightenment, the end of the day, 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 だから一つは、えー、と子育て子供の仏様でもう一つは私たちが死んだ時に地獄にいた時に助けてくれる人で地蔵の字は土地っていう字を使うから、えーとうん、橋とか道路とかそういうものをこう開発する時のなんていうかな守り神というか、うん、例えば橋かけるときに橋のたもとに地蔵を作るとか、ね。うん、so, uh, this, the, 地蔵菩薩 is very popular.、うん、so, and it feels close to, the, to us,、うん、human beings, us people. So, they have、uh, a lot of tasks.、Uh, うんうんうん、one is about the baby, baby. raising baby.、うん And one is if you go to hell,、mm-hmm. then Jizo Bosatsu will be the only person who can pull us out from the hell. And also, Jizo, the, the character G is、mm-hmm. land in, in Japanese kanji character. So it protects、uh, when they're developing land or、uh, building a bridge or、mm-hmm. making roads. And even you will find、uh, Jizo Bosatsu. Uh, by the bridge sometimes because that's protecting、うん、the land. Okay. Yes. Thank you. There were a couple、yeah. more that came in. I'm hoping they were going to be on the iPad. But one question is if per- impermanence is one of the concepts of Buddhism, when is it not appropriate to restore an important cultural object?、うんうんうん難しいですね。それもうケースバイケースだけど、うん、あ一番直すのに気を使うっていう答え方しかできないけど、うんえっと、仏像は手のハンドジェスチャーで
像の名前というかその種類を表してるんですね。だから、えー、手を変えるとかそういうのはなかなかこうリサーチディープリサーチしないと難しい。So it's case by case.、Uh, there's no a rule of what you can、uh, restore and what you can't. But it's case by case. Maybe that's why it, this is decision making for them is very important and very difficult. But what she is always careful about is the hand gestures that the Buddhist statues have because they speak for what kind of statue they are. So they, they have to go into a deep research, otherwise, they cannot fix the hand gestures or the fingers. Next one was a comment.、Uh, love the Converse sneakers. <laughs> Thank you so much for the fascinating talk. Amazing to find people's wishes from so long ago and what they can tell us about history. You do very important work. Thank you. The next question Is there actually a plan to restore temples in Japan, like a schedule as to when or which temples need to be restored? <laughs> うーんないかな<笑>ないからこそ把握されてないっていうところかな、うん、そうね把握されてないし、うん、あのオーナー自体がどういう状態なのかっていうことを知らない方のが多いかな So the answer would be no and the, the, the reality is that Because there are so many temples, it's hard to organize and to manage and understand how it is. And also, she says that the, even the owners are not、uh, aware of the, the, their uh, pro, uh, properties、mm. or cultural properties, how damaged they are, and how much they need to maintain,、uh, do the maintenance、mm. for their cultural properties. I know. それは関心がないとかじゃなくてやっぱり信仰の対象だからむやみに何て言うのかな、うん、こう調査するとか、うん、そういうことはされないので。そう、いつなびかずでやなインテレスティンでやわでいっぱいつあつ、ばかずいつあかあいつあいつあプロティーあつあつあつあつあつあつあつあつあつあつあつあつあつあ Investigating and uh, researching uh, without, uh, without a big reason, a certain reason. So that's why it's not about not being interested, but it's hard for the owners to understand how, how it's、uh, kept and preserved. Thank you. And another question Are there colleges or art schools in Japan that have programs to do this kind of restoration work?、Oh. 大学とか学校の修復の仕事と教えている、うん、えっと大学で教えているところもありますねただ私が知ってる限りだと大学院になるドクタードクター,ドクター To get a doctorate degree.、Mm. Mm. So, there are colleges and universities who teach e s this method of restore, restoration, restoring, but it's all,、uh, it's most of the time it's a doctor、mm. level to study of this.、Mm. But is it? Much more, I know, book yoga, sector, got yatter. So, there are universities that's been,、uh, that's a religious uh, university which is from a certain sect, and those universities have、uh, studies to restore their sect properties. But that's one of the sects that you,、uh, you can see. You didn't go to school. <laughs> <笑>あの1年大学に行ってるけど、うんうん、基本的には親方にボスに教えてもらってそう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう、そう
all the uh, techniques. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. That's all the time that we have. So thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you, Akiko and Reiko, very much. It was a very interesting presentation. Thank you. Absolutely. So if you are interested, in two weeks on September 22nd, we'll be hosting our next TAC Talk with Daishi Yoshimoto, who is the architect behind our club's Nihonbashi facility. So please join us if you're interested, and we hope to see you next time. Thank you.